I've spent a lot of years doing uh, self-defense and, and different kind of suppressive movement training, literally over a dozen years. When I watch these two officers trying to take him down, I don't see a lot of adeptness by them. They're really struggling with this one guy. I don't see any evidence of super strength by him or him being drugged up in a way. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But Both he know he could have gone necessary. home if he hadn't fired at him. And he'd still have a job if he hadn't well, fired we don't, at him. We don't know what would have happened. And under the law, you have to believe either that he has something that he's going to seriously hurt somebody with or that he has committed a crime that makes him a danger to seriously injure somebody. Which of those boxes do, do they check here? Welcome back, everyone. Isn't it funny that before this most recent police shooting, the media had declared tasers deadly weapons due to the relatively high body count from their use? Yet now that narrative is suddenly ditched in favor of a new narrative, tasers aren't deadly. Why? Because the media needs another martyr to inflame racial tensions that leads to more riots because they think that somehow benefits them politically. To that point, last night, CNN's own Fredo Cuomo interviewed veteran police officer Steve Gaynor, who is the president of Cobb County's Fraternal Order of Police. The guy has been a cop all of his life and knows what he's talking about, unlike Fredo Cuomo. Fredo made a complete ass of himself as usual, even claiming at one point that he is better trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat than the officers that were involved in that shooting. And if you are interested in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're going to need to get into shape. Let me help you with this special offer for my subscribers. Have you found yourself great? at the fridge a lot more than usual these past couple months? If so, you're certainly not alone. And as a result, you could see your weight creeping up too. If you want to take back control of your health and weight, this message is going to be very important for you. I'm fairly sure that if you've ever walked into a health food store or flipped on the television, you've no doubt heard of the ketogenic diet or keto. It's one of the most popular diet trends on the earth right now. My wife's really into it, but me, not so much. I just don't like the foods that you have to eat. Keto Elevate is specifically designed to help you quickly and efficiently raise your ketone levels so you can reap the benefits of the keto diet lifestyle without all the restrictions. Right now is the perfect time to focus on your health and Keto Elevate is ready to help. We all know that your health is paramount and during these trying times we got a very special offer in place. You can get your first shipment of Keto Elevate on its way to you right now and for a whopping 51% off for my subscribers. Click on the link below or just go to www.ketowithdronetech.com and get your order right now. Be one of the first to reap the rewards that Keto Elevate can bring to your life right now and take advantage of our 51% off and free shipping to the U.S. That's www.ketowithdronetech.com. And you have to look at it from their point of view. This is We what both know he could have gone home if he hadn't fired at him and he'd still have a job if he hadn't fired well, we at him. We don't know what would have happened. We don't he know. He was running away, Steve. Where, what was going to happen? He was running away. Chris, he, what's he going to do when he runs away? What's he going to do? Is he? Now we know what the criminal history is, but we didn't know that at the time. But could he carjack somebody? Could he be scared so much that he's going to kidnap somebody in another car? Is he going to hurt a civilian? There's a lot of things that come into play that you have to play out and go, I'm responsible for this individual that I was going to arrest. And he now has a weapon that I provided him because he took it from me. Uh, yeah, why not just let him off the hook? The law shouldn't apply to black men, apparently. Of course, there's nothing at all irresponsible about letting a drunk man who just passed out in the drive-thru of a Wendy's go back out into the public. Especially a guy who just got let out of prison serving a seven-year sentence for beating up little kids and who was only released because of the coronavirus. And what the hell? Not only do you give this guy a pass for drunk driving, but you're going to give him a ride home too? See, it's easy for Chris Cuomo to virtue signal here because he has absolutely no responsibility. It's those police officers in that moment that had that responsibility. Why is Chris Cuomo so dismissive of drunk driving as if it's no big deal? Yeah, it's true that drunk driving deaths have been trending downward for decades now, but it still kills like 10,000 people a year. Oh, right. Chris Cuomo likes to get drunk and drag race. Way back in the ancient times of 2016, he was spotted getting drunk and then drag racing, which led to an accident that he fled from. Now it's all making sense. Chris Cuomo is a roid raging, drunk driving danger to society, and he's running cover for other dangers to society. There he was 
fight turned in a twisted mode where his back. No, he was available. he was so. running away. This is a huge part of the fact pattern. <laughs> Typical Chris Cuomo talking about fact patterns while blatantly lying. No, the guy wasn't just running away. He was running while turned around and firing behind him. Turned in a twisted mode where his back. No, he was available. he was so. running away. This is a huge part of the fact pattern. And a taser doesn't count as deadly uh, deadly force when you guys use it. So why does it become one when he uses it? When we use it, a trained individual using a taser is not a deadly weapon by Georgia law. So a trained individual knows where to aim the, the, the taser. An untrained individual does not, and it becomes a deadly weapon at that point. It's if not in the law. Why, the, wh where do you get that from? Well, I get it from the training then, okay? So the training that we've had for over 20 years tells us that, that if they take your baton or your taser, it now becomes one step more that you have to use deadly force because those can be used against you. <laughs> Here we go again. Now suddenly, because it's politically expedient, tasers aren't deadly weapons, even though they are designated less than lethal, meaning that sometimes they can be lethal and they do kill thousands of people every year. It used to be a regular media outrage that police used tasers specifically because they were killing people. And if you look at the district attorney from Fulton County, Two weeks ago, the taser was a deadly weapon. This case, the taser is not a deadly weapon. So, Mr. District Attorney, you've got to make up your mind. Is it, is it or isn't it a deadly weapon? The, the case with the two college students in the uh, protest down in the city of Atlanta, in which those two officers were fired, and then arrested by the district attorney only before the investigation was even complete. I understand why that was frustrating to a lot of officers, and I know it took the chief by surprise. I don't remember the taser being a fundamental part uh, of the analysis there. You have to believe either that he has something that he's going to seriously hurt somebody with, or that he has committed a crime that makes him a danger to seriously injure somebody. Which of those boxes do, you, do they check here? Yeah. Well, he has committed a crime. He's committed an ag assault upon two police officers. He's stolen an the item. The analysis from one is about officer. what he did before the altercation with the police. You don't get to build in what happened in that moment with him as proof of his criminal behavior. <laughs> Screw you, Cuomo. I just love how he acts like this guy committed no crime before the police showed up, even though he was passed out drunk at a Wendy's drive through And like I said yesterday, in every state in this country, if you're passed out drunk in a car that's out in public, you will get a DUI. And how could you at all argue that this guy is no danger to the public when he was just released from a seven-year prison sentence for beating up little kids only because of the coronavirus? It's not as if this guy had a complete change of heart and was released early because of good behavior. Cuomo's implication here is just mind-blowingly stupid. As if this man had some sort of a right to fight the cops, steal their weapon, and then shoot it back at them. Like there's some realm of reality where that's a legitimate response to being lawfully detained. <laughs> I just, I really hate Chris Cuomo. In other news, MSNBC continues its Orwellian propagandizing of a violent far-left takeover of a section of Seattle they're calling CHOP. So in this case, we have this MSNBC reporter who's in the process of spinning and candy coating like mad to frame CHOP as something like a street festival or street fair. When these far left maniacs come out of the woodwork to accost him for calling it a street festival, declaring that that's not what it is. Now you've seen essentially almost like a street festival type atmosphere, a street festival type atmosphere. atmosphere no, with a very, it is not a street festival with a very intentional purpose. It is not a street festival. With it is not a street festival. Do not say that. Please Shame on not. you for saying that. Learn right now. It is not a street festival. Do you know our voices sound like it is from not. tear gas that police attacked us with? You have to understand yeah. some traumatizing things happened here. All of us are suffering from PTSD yes. in our own country. <laughs> I just cannot get over that this guy is in the process of lying in favor of these people and they step in to reassure the viewers that it's not a street fair. No, this is exactly what it looks like. A violent maniac left-wing takeover of Seattle. It just goes to show that these sniveling lapdogs in the media will be the first people they put up against the wall when the communists take over. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, please do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching guys. Keep coming back.